Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out-of-control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, J.K. Amazi, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. I am excited about this series that we're getting into. Yesterday, we spoke about mindfulness and the early stage of your reboot. And today, we're going to talk about mindfulness and your middle reboot. Before I go any further, I just want to clarify two things. Firstly, Mindfulness is one of the many tools that we have in the program, but it is a cornerstone of our program. I'll explain a few of the wonderful things that a mindfulness practice can do for you, for your life, not just for your porn reboots. And secondly, if you feel a little bit confused or overwhelmed by all the different stages of your reboots, please don't let that dissuade you from going through this series. I've found from talking to many men that as they go through the podcast, their subconscious mind just starts picking up different pieces of information. And they've often told me like, man, I'm able to identify where I am in my reboot just by listening to a podcast episode on that stage of the reboot. So you don't need to know what all the stages are. You just need to listen to it and you'll be able to identify where you're at, which becomes so much easier for you to go through the material. Okay. So a quick summary of what we did in the last episode in mindfulness and your early reboot. The conclusion there was that in the early reboot, you want to gain awareness and understand that the suffering, all the pain that you're dealing with, all the pain that you're medicating with pornography, masturbation, or some other sexual behavior, that all of that is more related to your emotional reaction and less to the thing that triggered you. So it's not about, oh, I got triggered by pornography or that woman or a thought or something I saw on TV or something somebody said or something I read. It's your emotional reaction. And as long as you keep focusing on the thing that triggered you, you're not going to reboot. Please, I don't care who you're working with. If all their focus is on the porn, on the boundary, on the thing, you're going to be spending too much time being outcome dependent. You're going to start trying to control things that you have no control over. You cannot control pornography. You're going to be exposed to it at some point or the other. And I'm not talking about explicit pornography. I'm just saying that we live in a sexualized society. You also can't control the things that are going to trigger you. There are a lot of external things that could come across your field of vision and your unconscious mind could react and there's nothing you can do about it. So what does that mean? Since you can't control those external things, the one thing you do have control over is your emotional reaction. And what we do at Porn Reboot is we help you to do that. And one of the many tools that will help you get there is mindfulness, okay? So at the end of the day, before you move on to the middle stage of your reboot, we want you to be able to take responsibility for your emotional reaction. And we want you to recognize that you have many options aside from PMO, porn, masturbation, or orgasm, And we want to help you to be able to choose better responses. And what happens when you're in the middle reboot? Well, the goal here is to be even less reactive and to be more responsive. What are the benefits of mindfulness? I promise I'll talk about that for a moment. When you train yourself in mindfulness, it's going to help you deal with stress. It's going to help you overcome anger. If you have any phobias or fears, it will help you overcome those, including anxiety. It helps you deal with compulsive behaviors, eating disorders, substance addiction, and even depression. Not only has it helped thousands, not even thousands, I'll say millions of people across the world, it is a practice that I was engaged in from the age of 21 years old. And even today, I have personally doubled down on my mindfulness practice to deal with other issues in my life as I get older. In fact, all our sessions in the intensive program always begin with some form of a mindfulness practice as a group, okay? Let me give you a scenario. You are a high performer, and your profession. Whatever your profession may be, you might be a client-facing consultant, an executive of some sort, or you might run a business. Whatever the work is that you're doing, you need attention. You need to be able to focus on something for a long period of time to get it done with excellence. And when you experience a trigger that is very intense 
that is recurring, it just keeps coming back, that takes your attention away. And if you're a high performer, you understand one thing I do, that once you've lost your focus and attention, it takes quite a while to get it back and to get back into that flow state, back into the zone. This is the importance of mindfulness. When your attention isn't taken over by the intensity of your trigger, so basically when your awareness fades, what happens is when your triggers become very intense, your awareness increases, especially when you're rebooting. We teach you how to get into this state automatically. So instead of experiencing a trigger and becoming reactive, you experience a trigger and you immediately become aware. Your awareness is like a emergency, the emergency, I don't know what it's called, emergency switch in an office building or, or the smoke alarm detector. Awareness is just like, hey, you're triggered. Here's what's happening. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. There's smoke everywhere and it's blaring. Okay. Now that's good enough. Once you're aware, you're able to take action and you're able to come back to your attention. The moment you're back to your attention slowly, you are able to observe yourself closely and consistently. So again, awareness increases when you experience a trigger. And right after that, as you become aware of the fact that I am triggered right now, I feel like I'm about to leave my desk or open another tab or engage in some behavior. As soon as you do that, you start automatically regaining control over your attention. And then your awareness slowly starts fading because you are now aware and your intention increases. Like there's a little bit of a balancing act. Now stay with me if this sounds a little bit complex to you. But what happens is when you go back to your attention, you're able to take your attention from the work you're doing to yourself. So awareness has bled the alarm and it's like, dude, take your attention from what you're doing and move it from the screen in front of you move it inwards. That same focus, you move it inwards to observe yourself and find out, hey, what's happening within me? Think of training your attention to be like a very powerful spotlight that can move to different parts of your reality with great speed. So an example would be if you get bitten by an ant or a mosquito or something, and it's a very sharp pain, your attention moves from whatever you're doing straight to that part of your body. It's like it's trying to figure out why is this so painful? It's trying to analyze what's the level of pain, what's going on. But before your attention went to that place where you experienced the bite, your awareness quickly expanded to let you know that something was happening. Hope this makes sense. That's the difference between attention and awareness. Now, at this point, I think you're starting to realize that attention and awareness are working together. You get attention and awareness working together by increasing your mindfulness. And it starts giving your unconscious mind new, real-time, live information on what's happening. When your prefrontal cortex is not fully developed or when you've lost gray matter, which is literally what happens when you're addicted to pornography, your attention and your awareness do not work together. Your attention instead gets taken over by your out of control behavior, your triggers, and then you move your attention to where? To pornography or to the thing you need to medicate. We need to retrain your attention to move towards the right thing. So attention and awareness are working together, just giving yourself information. And now your unconscious mind knows that the reactions that are being created are inappropriate reactions. Your attention, that spotlight, has quickly moved inwards. And it's quickly started shining a light on what you're trying to do. It's just like, oh, we're aroused. Oh, we're looking for nudity. Oh, we're trying to isolate right now, whatever the case may be. And immediately it identifies, not good. This is not an appropriate response. Listen, as you go through this process, you are rewiring your brain. You are reprogramming your brain at the deepest levels of your unconscious mind. The goal, gentlemen, when you get to change in your self-image, in the program, it's habits first, next, it is lifestyle, and finally, it is self-image. In order for your self-image to change, there are a lot of unconscious processes that you need to train yourself in. Now, you don't need to worry about what's happening in the unconscious. I did all the work for you. 
All I've done is I've given you the tools to use on the surface. You press this button and you go through this process each time you experience an urge and a lot of magic is happening in the unconscious. I just give you the levers. I tell you, push this lever at this time. This is the instruction manual. This is the system. And when you push this lever, this is going to happen. When you drive your car, you don't worry about how the engine works. When you use your computer, you just click the power button and it starts. You're not concerned about any of those things. That's what Porn Reboot is. And this entire process being triggered, your awareness kicking into high gear and turning on the alarm, your attention immediately moving inwards to find out, hey, what's the response? What's going on? And then letting your unconscious know that this is a bad thing that's happening. This is an inappropriate behavior, an inappropriate response. All of that begins with mindfulness, okay? The longer you can stay mindful, the more information is available and the more reprogramming happens. The longer you can stay mindful, the more your attention is going to be able to move from one thing to the other. Many of you don't have the ability to have sustained attention because that is managed by your prefrontal cortex, which has been damaged. Every time that you're opening another tab, task switching, thinking you can multitask, using Instagram, you are depleting your ability to have sustained attention. And thus, when you first start the process of rebooting, you will find that when you start using the tools first, you just go like, ah, fuck it, I'm just gonna slip, I don't care. That's simply because you haven't developed a strong enough awareness. And how do you do so? Well, by putting in the reps. And soon, your attention is strong enough to quickly go through each response that you're dealing with internally, analyze it, and send the message to your unconscious that this is not good, this is not good, and this is not good. This is one of the ways you work with your brain instead of against it. A lot of other programs there, 12-step programs, abstinence programs, all of these things that are heavily dependent on willpower, I was probably the first person who talked about not using willpower when it came to porn addiction. Interestingly enough, suddenly everyone is, is using it, but I've examined some of the things they're talking about, and it still involves willpower. <laughs> Very few of them are able to penetrate to the depth that we do here at Porn Reboot. You have to train your unconscious mind, working with your brain, to do the work for you. Distracting yourself is not using your unconscious mind. It is using willpower. Identifying an urge, calling your accountability partner, walking outside, taking a cold shower, doing something else, saying a mantra, saying a prayer. All of these things are effective in the short term, but they do not rewire and reprogram yourself at the deepest level. So a couple of things to be aware of when it comes to the middle reboot is actually the longest stage. We've got the pre-reboot, early reboot, middle reboot, late reboot, and we've got the maintenance stage of your reboot. But the middle reboot is the longest because when you're mindful, your consciousness continues to pick up and communicate the consequences of that event, the event being the thing that triggered you and everything that came up during that process. Your consciousness is learning during that time. Like, hey, what are the effects? What are the pros and cons of this behavior? For a lot of brothers, they have to put pen to paper and do exercises like dialoguing, rationally rational behavior exercise. But as brothers get more and more sophisticated with the system, they're able to do all of this in their head. And mind you, this is not a skill set that applies only to your triggers for pornography addiction. The wonderful part of the porn reboot system is that you are able to apply this mindset when you are distracted or triggered with something in any aspect of your life, in business, in your family life, in anything else that you're dealing with. So your conscious mind is constantly learning and is constantly impacting your mental state. The one thing I want to mention here is that the duration of your mindfulness is very important. And that's why it takes a while with the middle reboot, because you're training yourself to do something that's uncomfortable for you. You don't want to do that. You want to take back control of your attention and you want to put it to something that's going to release dopamine. But instead, you're choosing to do something else. And while it may not feel great on the surface, you will start noticing that each time you get triggered from then onwards, the next day, the next week, you realize that you're doing less and less work. 
You're like, dang. Like the last time I slipped, the other time I slipped, the third time I slipped, the fourth time, actually, it was a while. I actually was able to overcome it. And then I slipped after a couple of hours. Then the next time it happens, you're just like, oh, this is interesting. Before I even got to the point of a slip, the alarm went off in my head. And this is how it progresses, which is one of the reasons why I say that slips are data. I'm not worried about the first slip you have. Some guys are so far away from the rebooting process. If you're beating yourself up after every slip and relapse, you are not rebooting. You're just beating yourself after every slip and relapse. You are making zero progress. So what do you need to do? Anytime you are triggered, please apply mindfulness to that situation so that the unconscious conditioning can begin to do its work of reprogramming your mind. So every time you're mindful, you trigger a set of, let's just call them unconscious programs. And these unconscious programs, they cannot be suppressed. They cannot be repressed. They have nothing to do with distraction. I'll say it again, because if you're using any other traditional program, you're going to be doing some version of distract yourself. They're going to teach you, hey, distract it, suppress this emotion. We do none of those things. Every time you're mindful, your emotional reactions get weaker because your unconscious mind is doing all the work. The less reactive you are, the more empowered you become to respond objectively. Now, gentlemen, don't mind me repeating myself. I'll put it for you like this. Even as I speak, I have to deal with your conditioning, the things that you've heard about habit change, the things that you've heard about addiction recovery. So I repeat certain things two or three times because I'm trying to get the message into your unconscious mind so that the next time you experience an urge, you don't try to suppress it and you don't try to distract yourself from it. Okay. So the less reactive you are, and the more you use your attention and awareness, the more empowered your self-image is going to be better. And you're going to be encouraged to respond objectively. So it becomes a positive reinforcing cycle. There's no feeling bad about yourself. There's no moving your attention to the wrong thing. It's simply attention and awareness. And then you notice when you use attention and awareness, your brain, also we can just call this your unconscious, you work with your brain and your brain is like, cool, I'll help you. I'll help you overcome this. Why? Because you have taken over control of attention and awareness. In the past, you weren't doing any of that. Attention was there, awareness was there, but you were using these tools in an irresponsible way. Aware. Oh, I'm aware that I'm triggered. Okay, cool. I'm going to move my attention to pornography. And then bad things happen to you. And your unconscious is like, bro, so... This is what we're doing. We're just going to keep doing bad things and rewiring our brain this way. And you're like, yes, that's what we're going to keep doing. And on top of that, I want you to, when I'm done and I orgasm, I want you to reprogram my brain to feel like a piece of shit too. And your unconscious is like, all right, say less. Why? Your unconscious is not good or bad. Your unconscious is like a computer program. Anything you input, it is going to do. It doesn't care. It is not there to save you. It is just a tool, and it is your choice how you want to use it. I encourage you to learn how to use it to its full capacity because it is a powerful thing. It will quite literally propel you out of the physical location you are, and you'll open your eyes one day, and you're like, damn, I just dreamt of being here. And your unconscious is like, yeah, well, you told me you wanted to be here, so all I did was for the next couple of years or months, I just started looking for information that would help you get there. When you prayed, when you sent a message to God, when you spoke to the universe, when you gave affirmations, I was the conduit for all of those things. I was not saying that to you because it's still unconscious, but that is how it works. Okay. Now, what if you feel that you can't, for some reason, be mindful in the moment? I think this is important to acknowledge because when I first started, mindfulness sounded good, but... It sounded like work, to be honest. If you feel that you can't be mindful in the moment, what I'd like you to do is to go back and vividly recall whatever the triggering incident was. Like, let's say you've already slipped or you've already relapsed. That's okay. It's absolutely fine. Don't beat yourself up. 
but collect the data, go back, and then I want you to observe in a non-judgmental way, not going like, oh my God, I'm so fucking weak. I can't believe I just gave in to that. I told myself I wasn't going to do it again, and yet I did it again at the same time every day. Oh, John, you're so dumb. Don't do any of that. Observe in a non-judgmental way, like a scientist looking at an experiment and going back, what happened during this experiment? And the moment, listen, the moment you begin to observe it in a non-judgmental way, even though it already happened, that automatic process of your unconscious mind processing it and reprogramming it will still begin again, even if you slipped while trying to make the effort to control your attention and your awareness, if at the end you do not put a negative program of beating yourself up and bringing up negative emotions, but instead choose to immediately do an autopsy of your slip or your relapse in a non-judgmental, absolutely rational, logical, experimental, scientific way, what happened? During that time, what was the emotion that came up? You try to relive it without getting triggered, which is actually perfect because you just jerked off. You just orgasmed. You're filled with prolactin. You're not even able to, to get turned on. It's the perfect time to do it. Some of you will wait because you're like, oh, I'm filled with shame. I'm going to wait two hours before I acknowledge it. Don't acknowledge it. Don't be like a, <laughs> I was in the park the other day, you know, like when a dog poops, watching a dog poop, it pooped. And I was just like turned around. It's like ashamed, right? It looks ashamed that it's like pooping and doesn't want to look at its poop. Don't be like that. Or don't be like a cat that poops and then covers its poop with the litter. Or, oh, I don't, I don't want to see it. No, go back and examine your poop. <laughs> Not the best analogy, but basically he's talking about examine something that might bring you shame that you don't necessarily want to look at. Usually, if it's very painful, our natural tendency is to kind of put it out of our minds to justify or rationalize what we did. And often we'll put the blame elsewhere. When you do this, it keeps the information from reaching the unconscious. Make the commitments to yourself, my brother, to go back and observe exactly what happened during your slip and your relapse. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about mindfulness and the late and maintenance stage of your reboot. Hope you're finding this helpful. I'll see you in the next episode. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out-of-control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn-Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. The second way is, if you're not sure where to start but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, The Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man and free yourself from shame, guilt and underachieving, then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom.